Hey everyone, welcome back to the show. John Clark here with Private Practice Workshop. Uh, I'm a therapist, group practice owner, and business coach, and uh, I'm excited to introduce my guest for today. I'm sitting down with Josh Ramsey. He's the chief marketing officer and marketing consultant. He's been a Google partner for more than a decade, and during this time, he's been providing marketing and SEO training across the U.S., Presented as a keynote speaker, written a book on how some SEO companies disguise laziness and hide poor strategies, and has been interviewed and highlighted on numerous podcasts, including his recent interview on the Christian D. Evans podcast, which is airing uh, in July, or in this case, has aired in July. Um, Josh, thanks for being here. How are you doing? And um, what uh, what else should people know about you just right off the bat? Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, sure. You know, I mean, I guess, I mean, what to know about me. I always like to start off. I used to do a radio show back in the day, and I used to always say when I let off, no one cares what the girl's name is. And what I mean by that is no one cares what your name is, what my name is. What we care about in everything that we do in life is the uh, the quality that someone would bring to us, right? Like, what are they going to do for us? And even if we're the nicest people, I mean, I talk about my wife throughout all my teachings, all my conferences. And she's one of the greatest people that anyone ever meets. Uh, but at the end of the day, no one cares what her name is. They just love the way she makes them feel as a friend. And that's what I always like to start with. Uh, yeah. of anything that I share is just, you know, what is it that people are looking for? And that's really where it all kind of starts from if that, if that makes sense. It makes a lot of sense to me. Um, and it's an interesting point to to start with. Um, you know, yesterday I was sitting down with a therapist, and um, we were pulling up his website. He was wondering why things aren't working, or he has traffic and no one's inquiring or clicking through. And um, the entire website was about um, him, <laughs> him and um, his background and all the different methods he uses. And just right off the bat, from from the very top of you know his website, it was about him and. Um, there's a missed opportunity there, right? Because like you said, people are trying to get where they're going and people that are looking for a solution, you know, to a painful, urgent problem in their life, they're, they're looking to make some sort of purchase to fix that problem. Right. And that's, that's what their brain is, you know, geared toward doing right in a, in a marketing situation. Well, we have, yeah. So all we focus on though, as business owners and, and practice uh, is we, we think about the blood, sweat and tears and the time and energy that we put in, and that's what we're proud of. But yeah. what we have to understand is what is the opposite side thinking, the other side of the table, right? Like, and that's really where good marketing starts is, you know, a, a, a marketing mind once said very well, he said, identify what your prospect is thinking, say that in your marketing and you're done. Yeah. So, like That's really what it comes down to. There's a lot yeah. of levels to that, but that's, that's a big part of it. That's an interesting lead in for therapists because we deal with thoughts and feelings <laughs> very intimately every single day. And, you know, one exercise is for a therapist to sit down and, uh, or even jot down in session things your clients say or things that they said in a session today, right? Little one liners um, that are reflective of their pain points and their wishes, right? I mean, there's just some, some gold to find in, in our clients' words, right? Yeah. You know, you know, on that same vein is, uh, you know, the messaging. I started recently working with a drug trial company and it's similar worlds to kind of where you're at. And in their world, one thing that that we identified very quickly when I started working with them was they're they were running paid ads and these yeah. paid ads had a focus of uh, almost the message was just if someone was looking for drug trial science. That's that's what the paid ad was for, but they didn't write any of their messaging or content around people that were clicking on paid ads, yeah. but with a different mind of what they were typing into Google. So we were showing up, but the thought process were, there was a huge disconnect there. And I think that's where you have to kind of understand is like maybe that second point. Number one, they don't care what your name is. Number two, are we saying the right thing? Right. And yeah. then number three, is it communicating? I'll, I'll kind of kick it back over to you, but I'll say this. A lot of people know who Zig Ziglar was mm -hmm. and Zig Ziglar used to say, it's not how you say it. It's how, or it's not what you say. It's how you say it. Mm -hmm. And I tell people now it's not what you say or how you say it. 
it's what's perceived by your audience. And I know that's a big part of your world, but it's that yeah. perception through the web that is one part of it. Now, as a fractional CMO, I talk more than that. But when we just talk about the web in that first touch point, a lot of times that's what we have to start with. Let's talk more about that starting point because uh, number one, you know, a lot of, you know, we work with therapists in private practice and, and that's our, our audience here. But um, as a fractional CMO, what does that mean? And what's the starting point when you come into a business uh, that's where the business leader is saying, um, yeah, we need more business. We need more clients. Our marketing isn't working or it, we think it could be better. Where do you start with them? So there's a lot of ways to start, but the first thing I always like to do is understand where they came from. Um, you know, if you build a website, there's a lot of infrastructure that can go into a website. There's a lot of different elements. Um, when you're running a business, you may have been around for 20 or 30 years and the track record of what you've done and why you've done it matters because if we can pick up on those little pieces of what's worked and what hasn't worked, we can then identify what may work in the future. There's not a one uh, silver bullet, so to speak, that's going to work for everybody. Different marketplaces, different uh, services that you offer, uh, different practices that you have. There's a lot of different ways to, to drive interest to what you do. Yeah. He is to find multiple streams that all lead in and then track each of those streams. Had a meeting just uh, about an hour ago with a client of mine and the same conversation happened where I said, you're getting, you're paying X dollars here and you're getting this amount of leads, but out of those leads, you're getting a smaller amount that are converting. And then on this stream, you're paying this and you're getting a larger amount of leads, but a smaller percentage of them are actually turning into sales. Yeah. So when you look at just those two streams, it took the client a little bit of time to understand that they were paying as a, for instance, 500, 600, 700, but the 700 seemed too high for them to spend on. Yeah. They were unhappy, but it was a better qualified lead. And at the end of the day, it was a better lead generation for them because yeah. they were losing more sales out of it. And I think a lot of times as business owners, that's where business owners get caught is yeah. they don't look at the big picture. You're good. If you're listening to this podcast, you're good at what you do. Mm -hmm. But you probably didn't start doing what you do and listen to this podcast thinking to yourself, I'm a great marketing person. I'm great at sales, right? In this particular podcast. Yeah. You're just thinking I'm good at this and this is how I can help people and this is what I enjoy. The, the, the paradigm shift that has to happen for business owners is understanding that at some point in mind, you have to know when to elevate yourself and bring in a new mindset to be able to look at all the little pieces of your marketing that yeah. are drawing in interest, engage and set KPIs to know what that KPI should be of what should we expect from yeah. any effort we make. Yeah, I love that. I mean, not all traffic is created equal, right? If I sit down with a therapist and they say, um, you know, John, I've got a thousand visits a month, a thousand users a month coming to my website. My Google Analytics tells me so. Yeah. Um, but how is your business growing or not growing, right? People aren't inquiring. I had a, you know, a therapist recently who um, she had <laughs> thousands of new users every single month coming through a certain blog post that was doing no good for her local business, right? A local business in Los Angeles, right? In a very particular neighborhood. Yeah. And so that traffic is doing very little for her, right? It's also about intent, you know, and if people go to Google and they're searching for, you know, what is trauma therapy um, or how do I know if I have PTSD, that's a different stage than trauma therapist near me or trauma therapist, San Francisco or trauma therapist, Noe Valley, San Francisco, or whatever it is. Right. Um, or within the realm of trauma therapy, which is, you know, what my own practice does. We do EMDR. It's a very niche treatment for trauma therapy, right. For, for trauma. If you search EMDR, San Francisco, EMDR therapist, San Francisco, you already know what EMDR is. You you know that it's for trauma and you have trauma and you're looking for a trauma, an EMDR therapist in your area, very close to our address, right? So that traffic, even if it's 50 people a month, operates, you know, does very different things for my business, yeah. you know, than the other, than what I was mentioning. So what, what are your th thoughts on that? 
Yeah, that's, I mean, great points. There's a lot to unpack there. Yeah. The first thing I want to just kind of go back to, and we can go away from it and come back to it later if you want, is as a fractional CMO, um, the point of, a, of working with a fractional CMO is to really understand the bigger picture, not just focusing on the website. Yeah. And, and I know we're staying on that right now and I'm totally good with that. There's a lot to unpack in what you just said, but understand one thing that I think a lot of people out there don't understand about what I do is I own a full stack ad agency, but after running and being in an ad agency world and before that selling media at multiple different plateau or plateau yeah. uh, plates, mm -hmm. and then now moving into a CMO role where I have an ad agency that supports me as needed, but I'm a, I'm a fractional CMO where people can hire me to run all of their marketing. It's messaging, it's web leads, it's other, other type of leads that may come in and it's just a conversation. But just going back to what you said, you know, everyone's at a different stage when it comes to their web. So in your, for instance, you said you have a thousand visitors a month. In a scenario of a thousand visitors a month, I would likely lend myself to focus on uh, retention optimization. Some people call it CRO. Mm. When you look at CRO and a client retention optimization, you're looking at, at influences of when users come to the site, what are they doing? How are they doing it? How are they reacting? How long are they on your site? What specific pages are they going to? And then through that, I have software packages, another division of one of my companies, where we build software that tracks when users come in, what rate are they coming in from what sources? Yeah. And then we actually track all the way down to who's converting. So as a totally different, for instance, but everyone in the world will probably understand this. We have a, uh, a kitchen design company. And as a kitchen design company, here's what we found. And everyone has a kitchen. Everyone understands what a kitchen is. That's why I use the example. But with this, for instance, what we found was if people visited more than two gallery example pages, they filled out our contact form. Our problem was, problem, right, was that we didn't have our gallery profile high enough and visible enough yeah. when I started working with the client and identified that problem. So by changing that, we increased our click through and contact ratio by 5%. Now, if you think a thousand people come visit and you're at 2% and you go to 7%, yeah, that's a massive shift, right? So that and in that number, you know, tends to, to scale with you, right? So you double your traffic, you know, 7% of 2000, you know, is, is, is looking pretty good, right? Um, and, and on you but, go. But on that, if you'll stick with me for just a minute, here's mm -hmm. what most people don't understand about SEO, search engine optimization, as in where you rank yeah. on Google. The more interaction that you have from your website, the longer visitors stay, the more interaction that visitors will take, the higher ranking you will receive. Yeah. And people yeah. don't often understand that it does take some time, but there are KPIs that you should expect from your ad agency or web developed team that if they're doing SEO for you, you need to know that you have certain uh, KPIs that should be measured to know that you're getting that traffic and you're trending the right way. So well, I think let's that's talk more about those, right? Because a lot of therapists, they do hire help, you know, into your point or to the, the title of your book. Um, is quite interesting because similar to taking your car to a mechanic, if you don't know basically how an engine works, you take a car in, you know, you might get taken for a ride, so to speak, and no pun intended. Uh, <laughs> we, we, and owning a website being like a car, a lot of therapists will spend money and say, yeah, I'm spending, you know, a few grand a month on, on my SEO to do my SEO, quote unquote, which is something I hear a lot of therapists saying. And then I say, oh, great. What are they doing for you? I don't know. Keywords or whatever, you know, and they, they just, uh, sometimes their understanding of it ends there. Um, so how do you, yeah, let's drill into some of those KPIs and what, what business owners should be looking at. Yeah. I mean, that's a loaded question, but let's uh, try to unpack that as much as we can in a short yeah. amount of time. Um, the first thing I would say is a free resource that I offer is on my main website. Mm -hmm. um, and you can list that later. It's jrcmo.com. But in that under education, there's a full, it's the largest uh, SEO library in the world. And it's under education, SEO tools. And it is every element of SEO that you could ever imagine that's out there. 
Um, and I keep that updated several times a year just to make sure we're up on trends and we're updating information. You can cross check that by going to Google. Once you look at the library and then go to Google and type it in and yeah. you'll see that it, that it matches. So that's one free resource for people. Um, as far as, uh, you know, what we need to be doing and how we set KPIs, I think it really comes down to having a better line of communication and understanding your goals internally of what's a realistic request of somebody and then can they meet it? Yeah. Sometimes that's ambiguous and it's hard to know. Um, but I think that you should definitely ask your agency, can you do this? Is it yeah. feasible to think that we're going to have more visitors or ask them, what should I expect in three months? Yeah. And then hold them to it. I will give you one quick common problem that agencies do. Sure. They report only the good news and the good news changes every single month. So month one, they talk about bounce rate. Oh, we've improved in the last 30 days of bounce rate. Okay. Then month two, they're like, hey, uh, conversion rate. And they don't talk about bounce. You should be saying, what about the bounce rate last month? Now you're talking conversion. Next yeah. month, organic over the last quarter to this quarter. So a lot of times it's just about setting those KPIs and knowing when you ask people, what should I expect? And then as a business owner, if you're not working with a consultant, a coach, a CMO, it's saying to them, like, what should we happen? Now, yeah. let me maybe set a stage that this is going to help a lot of people because I've, I've dealt with this next scenario quite a bit. A company came to me and hired me and said, hey, Josh, what should we do? How should we do it? So I sat down and they had a, an ad agency and they were paying several thousand dollars, a decent amount of money to this agency. When I sat with the agency, the first question I asked them was, hey, what are your what is your keyword list for this client? Yeah. What's your keyword list? They didn't have one. I just it blew my mind. Yeah. So right off. Like what keywords are you expecting to go after? And and what is the ranking strategy? So yeah. Each keyword page has a set amount of keywords that you can have within it. Yeah. So understanding that is one part of it. And again, I mean, I don't want to go off on a deep end of, of too much info here, but yeah, no, yeah. that's what we're here for. I mean, yeah. And we, we, uh, you know, if there's one topic we, we hit on the most on this show, it's marketing. You know, I, um, I, I myself used to run a Google ads agency for therapists. We used to also build websites, do SEO, things like that. And, we eventually packaged it into a program called Fully Booked to, to kind of teach therapists the five steps to, um, to to marketing on our end, which is really, yeah, website, paid traffic, organic traffic, content, and email marketing. Um, but no, I, I think it's great. I mean, you know, uh, strategy has so much to do with it. And a lot of times therapists will hire someone who might be a pretty capable per SEO person technically, but they have no idea the strategy. The therapist doesn't have a clear brand, a clear idea of who they help or how they're going to stand out um, or whatever it might be. And if the, if you go to you know the, the SEO person and say, I have a brand new website, I want it to rank for San Francisco therapist. You know, if you tell someone to do that, they might do it for you. <laughs> you know, they might plug in those keywords and say, cool, I did your SEO and uh, I did what you asked. Yeah. Um, you know, when I sat down with my agency for who, who does RSEO for my practice here in San Francisco, I'll, we spent a long time looking at, you know, who are we? What is our brand? What do we offer? How are we different in the market? And then when we start digging into the keywords, we're looking for opportunities that are, that are, that are realistic for us, right? And one of those opportunities is not San Francisco therapists, right? Because <laughs> the, the people who have those top positions have been there for 10, 15 years in that mm -hmm. position or whatever. And um, if I'm looking to grow meaningfully in the next six, 12 months and beyond, you know, we're looking for those green pastures, so to speak. Right. And, um, that strategy piece is, is huge. So a little, a little piece right there that you're talking about, there's two elements that I would share with you and others yeah. to consider. One yeah. of them is an underutilized strategy that most people don't even know exists. It's called keyword gap marketing. So okay. we'll call it something a little bit different here and there, but keyword gap marketing is essentially a strategy that takes some, you got to be smart to do it. I, I'm not going to beat around the bush. You got to know, yeah. you got to know your stuff, so to speak, and you got to be on point and you can't be a joke. And, uh, and it takes a little bit of work. So it'll cost a little bit of money, but keyword gap marketing essentially 
looks at the gaps and the holes in the marketplace of what users are looking for and what their searches are along with what your competitors and you are going after and it looks for that gap of those three right yeah so if you have a triangle it looks right through that hole and it goes that's where we want to go and that's the content we need to write about so if you take that and then you think about how you write and you think about the other things we've already talked about on this podcast that's where you have to take things as a whole it all has to evolve around each other so when people look at my you know i do something called a digital marketing plan and there's give or take about 30 or 40 elements of SEO that we look at when we grade a website. And if you look at those, they each have a priority score because you have the core of just general speed, the core of like general errors, meta descriptions, meta titles. This is yeah. all basic, easy stuff. But then you get down to the nitty gritty, which carries less weight, but it's just as relevant as the other pieces. So you just have to pull all of that together, but understanding that that keyword gap marketing is what you want to go after if you're trying to rank, because then it all goes back through what I talked about, user engagement, how long on site, what's the bounce rate, and so on and so forth all matters. Yeah. But it's getting that first engagement of them to you. No, that's great. That's great. And it's a, it's a you know, um, something new for me to, to, to learn about. Um, I think part of it, you know, going back to what is the role of the business owner, right, is what I say is to know enough to be dangerous or to know enough to not get ripped off, you know, yeah. uh, again, just like owning a car. And yeah. uh, I don't need to be as skilled as, you know, a specialized mechanic who only works on cars like mine or whatever. Um, but you have to know enough, right? And you have to take interest in this stuff. And sometimes therapists don't, or you need to be in lockstep with you know, someone like you who can say, yeah, I'll take that, that marketing leadership position in your company and report to the CEO with key metrics, how things are going, how we've grown, challenges we're facing, right? Things like that. And then the CEO can make decisions based on, you know, that input. Um, you know, that's the way I think is a good way to visualize it. Um, a lot of our therapists, you know, they're either small, they could be a solo practitioner, they could be a small group practice owner, you know, five to 10 therapists. Um, and so they might not have a huge leadership team, right? They might just, uh, um, they've come from that place of doing everything myself because that's how I started. And how do I work myself out of that, that, that insanity? Yeah. Um, but those who do grow a bit bigger and are starting to develop a leadership team, whether it's internally and or, you know, fractional, right? In, in your case, fractional CMO, uh, CFO, I think is another great role to add you yeah. know, to a small business. So yeah, I don't have a conclusion to that, but you can take it and run with it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think it's just, that becomes, you know, you know, I, I think you've alluded to a business coaching and I think yeah. in the business coaching, you have to be able to know your steps. And I think one of the things you said is, you know, knowing enough to not get ripped off. So knowing your steps, knowing enough not to get ripped off. And I think that's becomes, um, you know, th that's such a hard thing because yeah. ultimately if I were to boil that down and not be able to talk to someone like you and I are talking right now, yeah. um, I guess the only thing I could really say is, you know, knowing your steps would really be what is it that you want to get to? It's a lot like business coaching. It's yeah. like, but just in the marketing world and the growth, sales and marketing. So in marketing, what are we going to do and how much are we going to spend and what should be the return on investment? Like right. What should we expect as an outcome? Set that benchmark. If yeah. I spend X dollars on this item, what's the outcome I want? Now, you may not have a realistic view, but if you're doing this yourself, start with that. Yeah. Start with you know, I'm going to spend this much on doing this item, AdWords, an event, um, whatever else, then create a measurement tracking or know how you're going to track it. I talk to this many people and I close this many people. Whatever that tracking is, that's where you want to start. I created something a long time ago that I share with quite a few people and I call it the crystal ball of marketing because crystal ball of marketing essentially really does exist. You remember back in the day when we goes, man, I wish I could just... I would know the results of something before sure. I did it, you know? Well, I created that and I actually have that. And what it is, is it is an algorithm of, of math along with the common knowledge of a marketing guy along with a business owner. 
because what the business owner knows is that what they've done and why they've done it. What I know as a marketing person is that if I go spend X amount of dollars on say radio, television, AdWords, whatever <laughs> yeah. that is, I can tell you how many eyeballs are going to see it. And then we run certain laws in the marketing world of if, you know, I, a lot of times it's called the laws of thirds. Um, a law of third would be 3000 people see it and then a third of them contact you and then a third of them engage with you and then a third of them become an actual lead versus yeah. sale, right? It, it breaks down. And that's kind of your logic. So there's a lot of ways to do that. And in every industry, it is slightly different. Right. But it is setting those those expectations and then marking them and benchmarking them. So as you grow and you bring a CMO on or another executive, you can look back at those benchmarks. And that's very, very important. I That's probably one of the top things that I do with every client in every industry is identifying those benchmarks and just trying to set them up on um, yeah. the front yeah, that's great. I mean, <clears throat> some of the ones we look at in our, our in my business and in the work we do with therapists, um, if we're looking at uh, you know website visitors or users uh, for Google Analytics, um, out of those, how many resulted in an inquiry, right? And what's that percentage? And then out of those inquiries, how many did you or your intake coordinator convert into a, a, a new customer? And what's the lifetime value of your customer or your client, as we call them? I, you know, I would just say 80% of therapists don't know those numbers. So it's really hard to know what's working or not working, right? Um, you have to you have to drill down a little bit and know those those key metrics. Those are like the vital signs of your business, you know. Um, we're going to answer, um, if you're up for it, Josh, um, with the time we have left, we have some live questions here. I'll pull up one by one if you're up for it. And, yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, before we do that, Take a really quick second to um, uh, to to thank our sponsor, Jane. Uh, you learn a lot about a company when you talk to their customer service team. And with Jane, you'll learn quickly that calls, live chats, and emails always end with a solution and a smile. Who is Jane? Jane's a HIPAA compliant cloud-based EMR that you can use to schedule, chart, invoice, and process payments all online. With free and unlimited support from real humans, you can receive the help when you need it. Learn more by heading to jane.app forward slash mental health and book a demo. You can mention the code PPW1MO, as in one month, uh, at sign up for a one month grace period applied to your new account. So thanks again to Jane for uh, being part of our show. And again, jane.app forward slash mental health if you want to give it a spin. Um, Here's a question. Uh, this is coming from Faith um, here live on YouTube. Um, and she says, what marketing resources are recommended in starting a private practice? And here's another great question you know, for you, Josh. When should a practitioner know before, or I mean, what should they know before outsourcing without wasting their time or money? Yeah, great question. I got to think here for a second and make sure I <laughs> answer it perfectly because there's two questions there to unpack. Yeah. So marketing resources that are recommended in starting a pri private practice. So the first thing is, I guess I'd go back to the keyword marketing, right? Identify what keywords that you want to go after, then look for the search volume of each of those keywords. When you identify the search volume, there's what they call keyword difficulty and the search volume. Your volume could be really high um, and your keyword difficulty medium to low. Those are the ones you want because other people are not paying attention to those words. And that goes back into the keyword gap, the, the gap marketing, right? So that's kind of the first thing that I would say, if I try to keep this, this conversation short, I can go deeper, but that's that part. The second question, uh, what should a practitioner know before outsourcing or wasting their money? Um, this is such a difficult question because what do you consider wasting? If you consider it wasting right off the bat, then don't do it. If you feel at all that it's wasting, don't do it. You know, one thing that I offer is a, uh, a two hour free consultation. Um, and I suggest that you do multiple consultations with people. And I feel like a 20 minute just becomes more of a pitch. So if you feel like you're getting pitched, walk away. You should be looking for a marketing consultant. And there's so many out there. You should be looking for a marketing company or a marketing resource, a marketing agency that you're going to outsource to that are going to give you enough viable data that they, that you can feel like this is what they're going to do and here's why they're going to do it. 
And what I would tell you to do is as a free resource, go download my book at jrcmo.com. You can go on and find it under education and ebook. Um, and there's the, all the chapters are listed. And my first chapter is basically how to choose the right ad agency, what to expect from them, what to ask them. Um, so it, it, that's the very first chapter. And that's what I would Great stuff. Um, I don't know if it's you or me, Josh. Someone froze for a minute, but I think we're back. We're back. I'm back. I'm here. Sorry. Okay, cool. <laughs> no worries. We're good. Um, yeah, and I just put a link to um uh, to those chapters that Josh was talking about here in the in the uh, chat on YouTube. We'll also add it in the um the sh <clears throat> the episode description uh, once once this is up, wherever you're um consuming this. So, yeah, I mean, th th this is great stuff. And to Josh's point, um, it's you know, whoever said it, either I win or I learn, right? So um, if you there's some fear of wasting money and certainly you don't want to get ripped off. And yet sometimes, you know, you don't know what you don't know until you've started to um, learn the game and learn how this stuff works and learn what you're willing to pay for and learn what you want to do yourself, right? Ultimately, you know, again, it, depending on the size of your organization, your revenue, many things, how much help can you afford? And also how much can you, can you afford to not make money this year? So a lot of, a lot of questions there. Yeah. Josh, I, I think, yeah. On that, on that same thought though, I would share and, and encourage people to think um, you set KPIs to look for your ROI. So your KPI is a key point indicator, meaning this is what we're going to do and we do it or we don't. And I'm simplifying this, but here's your KPI. I want to do this. So you hire an agency, you outsource and you hire an agency. I want them to build me a website. Okay. Well, if they did it, don't expect that SEO is going to happen unless that's part of your contract, right? So set your KPIs properly and make sure that you bullet point out all those KPIs, but your KPIs should lead to ROI. ROI is return on investment. So your KPIs should be, I built a website and it launched. Therefore my ROI is I have a website. But yeah. if you do SEO, your ROI, you need to set different metrics of your ROI that you're tracking, which is I don't just expect SEO, but what within SEO, which would be ultimately keyword rankings. And then you look at things like contact forms, how many times people are clicking, is it organic or direct, AdWords driven, on and on and on. So understanding the variable and the large amount of ROIs to track inside of your main KPI, but they should always be tied together of an ROI and a KPI. I think what's interesting, Josh, in, in measuring ROI, um, you know, if, if I have a website and I just launched it today and I have zero traffic paid or organic and I say, okay, well, the fastest way to get traffic is to start running some ads. And let's say in the case of a therapist, it's Google ads, right? Um, which are getting more and more expensive by the day in our case, because we have a lot of these companies like BetterHelp and Talkspace that are getting into our in industry and they're spending money that they haven't made yet. <laughs> you know, they're spending someone else's money. And so they can afford to spend more to acquire a customer, right? Than than we can. Um that that's that's one way to to get traffic though. And let's say you can do it and be profitable and month over month you spend X amount of dollars and it's generated at least that or more than that when you look at lifetime value of your client, right? In the case of SEO, I think it can be harder to measure that ROI, especially if I'm at ground zero, I have no traffic at all, and I hire an SEO you know, agency to take over and then paying them a monthly retainer. It takes time you know, to get organic traffic. And let's say we're just focusing on organic traffic. So if that's the case, I mean, how do you measure success, you know, um, and measure ROI if it's could be six months bef before I'm ranking on page one in San Francisco. Yeah. In our case, it was, you know, well over a year for some keywords. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thoughts. Yeah. I mean, it's a fantastic, phenomenal, top notch question, top notch. Um, and here's the honest, blunt truth about it. Agencies will come tell you it takes three to six months for you to see anything happen. And I'm here to tell you that's a total crap of beep. 
I don't know if you have a beat button. Or not. <laughs> well, I'm I don't know. Jokes <laughs> people, but you haven't probably haven't picked that up from me yet. But but I'm kind of a guy that throws the dad jokes around, you know. I like it. Um, but yeah, it's a total crock of mm. beep. Um, Interesting. Here's what I mean by that. There should be, if you're hiring an agency, there should be KPIs that are done and exactly knowing what they're going to do and when they're going to do it. And then they should tell you what the results should be. And that right there in itself, if you were to just literally drop the microphone right now, that's it. Yeah. And you should be able to see that from that, what to expect. Now, let me explain. I have a global company that came to me and they do concrete infrastructures in short. I'm going to paraphrase this yeah. entirety of what they do because they're a massive, massive company, but mm. they work on global uh, on a global level infrastructures like the Hoover Dam. And they came to me and they said, hey, we're not ranking well for this phrase, this key word. But they had a dedicated page, multiple pages for that phrase. So I came in and said, here are the 15 or 30 things. They're actually, I think my actual number was 26. I came up with a list of 26 things that we were going to do just on that page. Now, we had to do about 15 other things on their entire website because yeah. their entire website needed help. So logically speaking, your body is just like a website. Your name is your name. Your host is different than your name. I can go change my name at the courthouse. My host is different because it's hosting my body, right? But I can hurt my pinky and it doesn't break my arm, right? It's different than my head, my neck, my shoulders. So if my whole body has a virus, right, then I have a problem. So logically speaking, your website has to be in good health as a whole. Yeah. Then you go, hey, I really want to have a strong arm. So you go, okay, I'm going to start pumping iron to make a strong arm. So in this scenario, we looked at that one section and we created 26 bullet points of what needed to be done on that page. Within three months, we went from ranking for zero keywords to ranking for 36 keywords on the top 50 in Google. And we had 18 on page one. Yeah. 18 on page one. That's huge. Yeah. Now, they came to me different than what you talked about of, hey, I just launched a site. Sure. What do I expect? Blah, blah, blah. They have that. So there's different levels of building up your core. Like if anyone knows yeah. anything about working out, they always, the, the trainers always tell you work on your core first, right? Yeah. Like make sure that you have a strong core, then work on other things. Um, the web is kind of the same way. You work on your core. How many pages do you have? How often are you publishing content? Does it have the right keywords? Are you fast? Are you caching? Again, all these yeah. little things matter. Um, and I publish those online as well that people can look at. That's on my agency website. Um, but we post that information for free as well, where people can know these are the things I need to do. So if they want to find a cheaper route, they're welcome to. So Yeah, that's great. Does that help? Um, that helps a lot. I and mean, I'm, I'm you know, the, the, um, the selfish part of me doing this show is, um, I get to think about both my consulting clients, you know, the therapists that I coach and also my own business <laughs> and learning from people like you. So I'm, I'm making mental notes on both sides of my brain, you know, both of my, uh, my businesses. Right. And, um, yeah. in my case, you know, this was actually the first time I had ever outsourced to uh, a marketing agency for my SEO because it was just so darn difficult this time around in San Francisco yeah. starting this new practice about two and a half years ago, you know, and um, uh, yeah, and I also just didn't want to do it myself. So I wanted them to take that heavy lifting over and they they represent some bigger national brands and that's kind of what I wanted. And I also decided because ads are so expensive and um, just continuing that way um, that I would kind of go all in on organic. Right. And, and I, I mean, I have to say uh, I, I love organic traffic. <laughs> it's just my yeah. favorite type of traffic. If I had yeah. to compare it to, to, to Google ads and in many cases we, we will teach therapists to do both right. And early on to run ads. And then as your organic traffic ramps up, you know, you, you can keep running the ads, you can, you know, um, taper down your ads and all of a sudden, uh, you can get to a place where your marketing budget is going down and your revenue is going up, right? And once you have some good positions, you know, with Google, um, 
if you're doing the right things, like you said, your website's healthy, you're creating new content, your website's not broken and you know, things like that, it loads fast, all, all the right things, then you should be able to maintain those positions pretty well. And that can mean huge things for your business, right? It's kind of this compounding growth that once you get it and you get in those good graces of Google, it, it tends to um, you know, be pretty sticky, right? I'd like to share two things on what you just said, sure. if that's okay. Yeah. So the first one is I would con I would really encourage people to think about this. The first thing is um, when you talk about hiring an agency, like you, you said that you did, and a lot of people have hired agencies. I always, maybe this is a little bit like self-righteous to a level. I don't know if that's the right term, but um, but I look at it and say, wouldn't it be worth you spending an extra $800 a month to hire a guy like sure. me to watch your ad agency and give you unbiased, unfiltered, honest feedback on, yeah. are they doing their full job? Are we getting the most from them? Yeah. I mean, because what if I could push them an extra 20% that I look at and I go, they really didn't do enough this month, yeah. in my opinion. And then I have that conversation with them with you sitting on the phone and you realize, wow, I mean, I only spent an extra $800 with this guy and I yeah. spent $3,000, $4,000, $5,000 with this agency yeah. and everyone spends something different. Um, but if you spend a little bit more money, sometimes by bringing in a fractional CMO, at least this is how I work. I don't, I, I can't speak to yeah. others that could, but I won't right now. Um, most of them don't do that because they don't have that knowledge, but think about that part. So that's part one. Part two. A huge encouragement is that if you're using AdWords right now or have been, you need to be applying all of your AdWords spend and all of the education you get of AdWords over to your organic site. And if you're not, you are completely missing out on a massive part of organic growth because AdWords, I mean, I could literally stand on a soapbox right now mm -hmm. and preach to you true education of how Google makes their money through AdWords, why analytics paired with Search Console, Search Console and analytics equals Google AdWords. They just put it all together on the paid side. Organically, they make you work for it a little bit more because yeah. they really want to make money. So, I mean, I could walk yeah. you through the complexities of Google, but in short, if you can at least rewatch what I just said and like really think about it, yeah. you'll pick up what I'm laying down. No, it's great. I, I mean, having to really think about how google thinks i mean i'll have to have you back we'll do another episode just on that because it's a whole I mean, <laughs> can of words you know schedule and, an uh, hour or more because yeah. it's like yeah. it's when you see it when you see it and you hear me paint the picture it, all of a sudden light bulbs go off when i do yeah. conferences and i do conferences all over the country i mean i'm in la in september and um conference like people just like light bulbs go off and they tell me that all the time because yeah. they're like wow, this actually makes sense. And I'm like, yeah, yeah it, it does. It's logic. So Google's well, you, smart, but you can understand yeah. it. Yeah, it's it's ultimately a business and they're trying to make money as well. And, uh, you know, if you can understand kind of how Google thinks, it places a lot less pressure on, um, well, a lot of people when they're new to it, they just dive right into the technicalities of things or like, oh my gosh, I don't have... Um, uh, you know, I didn't change the file names of all my images. So I'm going to do that right now. You know, that's like learning about SEO. And so I think it's kind of like, you know, in the, I'm out here in San Francisco and in the tech world, the, they would say top down versus bottom up approach to, to, to you know, to, to something. But um, yeah, we're, we're here almost at time, Josh. Um, I just want to thank you so much for, for, for being here. Uh, it's been really informative and um, really top notch stuff in terms of deepening our knowledge of working with the CMO and really getting deeper on organic. Um, uh or organic marketing so i'm a big big fan of everything you're talking about um maybe let us know again how people can get in touch and we'll of course include link include links to this stuff in the description yeah i mean i have a ton of free resources i believe one of the things that we didn't really touch on uh too much but you you alluded to is i believe in business owners understanding five inches of water being able to swim five inches deep while i'm while i'm swimming 50 feet deep um, they need to understand at least a little bit. So that's why I create a lot of free resources on my website. So my website, you can post a link is JR stands for Josh Ramsey and then CMO.com. So Josh Ramsey, chief marketing officer.com.
I do a two hour free consultation. So they go online. There's a big button on there that says, get your free consultation. You fill out a short business evaluation. I review that. I do some research and then we schedule a time to talk and we jump on the phone and we talk through, what are you doing? Why are you doing it? What does it look like? How can you adjust? And then from there, if there's more work that wants to be done, I have different packages. Or I just say, look, verbally, here's your plan. Here's what you should do. Here's why I see it the way I see it. Go run with it. You know, some people love to send me some emails and say, here's the report I get from my ad agency. So I read through that and then give them feedback right there. So I offer that as a free resource because just like everyone, we're, tr we're all trying to do better. If we're really good people, which I believe I am, I try to put my, my money where my mouth is and really put myself out there and help as much as I can, as many people as I can. And, and that has always done me well. I've been yeah. able to grow year over year over year uh, just by doing that same thing. So yeah. that, that's, that's what I do and why I do it. It's great stuff. Um, Josh, thank you again for being here. Um, and for, for, um, for the rest of, of everyone, um, you know, what's happening right now at Private Practice Workshop, uh, I've been talking about it a lot the past few weeks, is the doors to our business made human mastermind are open. They open just twice a year. It's a weekly mastermind where you're going to meet with me and a small group of like-minded peers. We're really helping you design a business around uh, your vision for your business and life and giving you strategic coaching and accountability along the way for, for six months. Also includes uh, unlimited coaching with me through our uh, biweekly office hours. So if you're interested in that, we have a group for solo practitioners and we have a group for group practice owners, um, privatepracticeworkshop.com. Just click on Business Made Human to book a call with me. And uh, yeah, those slots are filling fast. It'll be full and, uh, and closed again in, in uh, uh, probably less than two weeks. So um, thanks again to Spruce for uh, sponsoring the show as always. And, uh, and thanks again to Josh. So, um, yeah, thanks again, Josh. And, um, uh, yeah, we really appreciate your time. Thanks for having me. Cheers.